You know, intention as a metric is a really interesting emerging area for us. When you think about, we have to be accountable for the dollars we're spending. We're spending hundreds of millions of dollars across mm -hmm. the, the globe to do this, but is it working? Are we actually getting customers to pay attention? Is it resonating? Is it moving the needle or is it just being seen? I think that's really changing the dynamic for how we think about media, how we buy media, and ultimately how we measure our impact. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting because that's something sort of net new for us as an industry. It's not something that we have the muscles to kind of know how to do. So what steps do you feel like are necessary to kind of get you to a place where you're more effectively understanding and measuring attention? Yeah, it's an interesting question because at the end of the day, the ultimate metric is sales, right? At the end of the day, we're in a business. And so everything is just some leading indicator for are we moving the needle mm -hmm. down the path? Are we changing people's perception of the brand? Are we driving you know, perception to, to, to uh, conviction and, mm -hmm. and brand love and ultimately purchasing along the way? So finding better leading indicators really is a, a, a passion point for us. I don't know where this is going. I don't really know the answer we'll get to at the end of the day, but holding ourselves and our partners more accountable to it really is impactful and important to us as we think about the journey. And if we could find those right metrics to use, for sure that'd be a, 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 of high interest to us. By the way, I, the leading indicator thing I'm also very passionate about because we have a terrible, terrible habit of picking bad proxy metrics yep, yep. and not understanding the relationship between proxy metric and ultimate kind of business metric. For sure. So I love that so we're much. Coordin we're correlating stuff all the time. Who knows yeah. if it's causation? I think and oftentimes we intuitively know it's not. Yeah. And yet for lack of something better, we're still using it time and time and time again. Yeah. I mean, I even look at our world when we talk about you know, Rami and, and this idea of return on marketing investment. Mm -hmm. If we had a customer that was going to cost $1 today versus one that's going to cost 10, Rami would tell you to pick the $1 customer all day long. Mm -hmm. But customer lifetime value, and I think mm -hmm. attention gets us closer to that, starts to think about maybe the $10 customer is, is 30 years worth of business at, at totally. 10x the, 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 the opportunity. So if this is one more step for, forward on getting uh, the right leading indicator, we're all, we're all for it. I love that. Um, so certainly we're living in a, in a complex world. Consumer attention is is hard yep. to capture, it's hard to earn. Um, people are hit with messages from every angle, every day, on every device. So how do you think about standing out? How do you think about cutting through the clutter? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, the, the stats I've heard, and they're probably even, even wrong, but order of magnitude, 5,000 brand messages per day to consumers. Attention span reportedly less than that of a goldfish, you know, so we're, we're on that path of evolution. Yeah, I think the first is finding our credible voice in the conversation. Mm -hmm. I think there are things that as a brand, we are credible to talk about, and there's things that are a stretch and a reach. I think some brands try too hard to be all things to all people. We need to find the place that people look to us as credible authorities. I think the second part is finding people who can tell our story for us. You know, there's advocates, mm -hmm. whether they're customers themselves, consumers themselves, or whether it's influencers and brand publishers that people look to for information, finding the right people there. And then, you know, really by segment, finding what customers, what resonates with customers. And for us, that may be on the customer segment level, or it may even vary by trip occasion. So when I'm traveling for business, I look here for my influence. Mm -hmm. Maybe as simple as a company travel policy and having the right information on the, on the internet site. And for, for leisure, suddenly I'm influenced by my favorite blogger, my family on, on Facebook. Yeah. And so I think it's about being credible with our key message and our core message to who we are, finding people who are credible in the space to help tell that story authentically and credibly, and then ultimately being able to vary the channels, vary the media mix based on what customer segments are doing what along the journey. So, you know, there, there are so many opportunities on new and emerging platforms, but one of the things, which is it's challenging in yeah. and of itself and an opportunity, but one of the things that you mentioned around sort of influencers has me thinking about how a brand thinks about what it can control and where it sort of lets itself you know, sort of grow and blossom yeah. and flower out in the world. I mean, how do you think about that? Yeah, I think the first you have to be comfortable with your brand. I mean, if you're going to put it out there, it's going to be what it is. And ultimately, if somebody's saying something that's truthful about you, but just not the way you'd like them to say it, that, that's a different problem that's incorrect, factually incorrect. Mm -hmm. and so I think the first is when we thread a message out there and we're pushing it out there, there's brand safety factors that we're putting into place. When you release it into the world, you are dependent upon other people to authentically tell the story. And I think it's getting the intestinal fortitude, you know, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. to know that you're going to get some lumps along the way, but the, the ultimate payoff of a more credible story being told yeah. will ultimately help the situation. And so you might not love the way it's said, you might not get exactly the brand messaging in, but enough people talking about you credibly in authentic ways to their audiences, I think the sum of the parts mm -hmm. is, is, is greater. Yeah, I mean, authenticity is a sort of overused word but consumers can smell out inauthenticity That's right. really, really easily. Well said, and it actually does brand damage. I mean, it's not totally. just brand health, it's totally. brand safety, it's brand damage at that point. So maybe one last question, it's related to this idea that we're talking about now is consumers have expectations, I think, of brands to, um, to sort of 
be good stewards of um, not just the consumer experience, but sort of the world. Yeah. So kind of how do you think about leading with purpose? You know, what is the, what is the role there for a brand like yours? Well, purpose for us is at the core of everything we do. Our founder set out over 100 years ago, and his quote was, to fill the earth with the light, warmth, the hospitality. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't get you out of bed in the morning, I don't know what is. He believed that you could achieve world peace through travel. So our purpose is, is, is clearer than ever. We want to leave the communities better than we found them and be an engine of economic opportunity. We want to create job opportunities for the youth in the world. We employ nearly 400,000 people across our hotels mm -hmm. in the world. Um, we want to make sure we create great customer experiences and ultimately returns for those who invest in us, whether as an investor, whether a franchisee across the system. So purpose is at the core of all that. Uh, you know, it, it's the right thing to do and it's also the right thing for business. Our ESG focus on reducing our water consumption, mm -hmm. our you know, energy consumption, the things that we can control along the way, we're a big enough company that we can influence the supply chain in which we purchase from. So I think the right thing there to do is make sure that in the spaces you're credible and counted on, you know, one passion point for us is to fight human trafficking. You know, mm -hmm. hotels are a key place to, to, to see the signs of it, fight it, and ultimately put an end to it. That's a place where consumers would expect us and should expect us to step up and own that space. Whereas other topics, you know, maybe we're not as best suited to do. And so I think it, when we think about our purpose, think about our role in the world, it gives a big halo and a big umbrella. Mm -hmm. Consumers expect and demand of us to be responsible corporate citizens, and the places where it's our core competency to either change the supply chain, change our behaviors, train our people, uh, those are the areas we lean hardest into along the way.